the National Grid IFA2 project update. Just to remind members, when this was considered previously by the executive, there was delegated authority given to the Director of Finance and Resources, Andy Warnell, in consultation with me to include the detailed land agreement documents, which are what are before us for noting this evening. And also, we're being asked to endorse the scope of work for two new technical studies, which are set out as appendices to the report. This, um, these leases effectively include everything that the Planning Committee decided, and there were some 90, I think, planning conditions there, but it goes much, much further, way beyond anything that the Planning Committee has agreed to. And this is fulfilling the commitment, commitment which I made very publicly, very many times on behalf of the Council, that we will not allow anything to happen at the Solent Enterprise Zone and to the Solent Airport at Daedalus, which is going to have adverse impacts either on aviation or on the Solent Enterprise Zone. So there are hundreds of pages, obviously confidential because it remains commercial in confidence at the moment, of the various leases, the construction lease, the lease where we lease the land to National Grid. But there are many important things which are within these documents in terms in specific terms, the cabling which is being laid, if that should pose an issue at a later date, then there is a lift and shift clause within the lease that will see the cabling lifted up and moved uh, to another location. There is an indemnity which will be given by National Grid to the Borough Council, whereby if there are issues that we need to address, uh, specific issues for tenants or other issues where there is potential adverse effect and there is an indemnity there uh, which will look after those interests of the council. It covers many, many heads of terms. It covers payments that will need to be made in terms of service charges which the council will uh, receive as it does for many tenants who are uh, resident on the site of Daedalus, whether they be on the Enterprise Zone or not on the Enterprise Zone. It includes, and, and specifically, the, the technical studies. One of those is looking specifically at any adverse effect on the Enterprise Zone from this project and how those potential adverse effects can be ameliorated. The other one is looking specifically at the cabling and what effect that could have, be it the AC cables or the DC cables, in terms of aircraft systems. And I did meet the chief executive of National Grid, who is looking after the project both on the Fairham side and on the Calm side. And he responded to a request I made to him that there should be a practical demonstration as well as part of this technical work so it's not just done on a, somebody's desk and somebody's computer, which looks at cables, real cables, in real ground, with real current running through them, and aircraft systems functioning above them, so that we can prove beyond doubt that there is not going to be any adverse effect from this project on aviation, or on business and business opportunities at Daedalus. There's even a clause in there which will see the you know, if, if National Grid should decide they're not going to use the building after all, after five years, we'll see the building taken away. Another clause, we'll see the building taken away entirely at the end of the lease period and the land reinstated. So there are many, many benefits within this. Clearly, it's still subject to a planning application which deals with the bearing of the cables. It's also, most importantly, subject to a planning application for the building itself and the interconnector building, which, of course, we're still awaiting those plans and they will be um, properly consulted upon as well. So what we're dealing with this evening is the council's responsibilities as a landowner and of course we can be far more onerous than the council acting as planning authority in ensuring that all commitments are adhered to and there's another one I think about no adverse effects beyond the 
boundary beyond the perimeter fence of the compound which will contain the interconnector building so uh, there will be no uh, additional electromagnetic radiation, noise, heat, sound and that's also at a distance above the building as well. So a vast amount in there which this takes care of and as I said what we're looking to do this evening is simply to note the progress and the conclusion of those detailed land agreement documents which members have in confidence and also to endorse, endorse the scope of the technical studies which are set out in appendices to the report this evening. Hopefully that gives a reasonable background. Mr. Wannell, is there anything additional that you've missed that you might need to be aware? Okay. So, any questions or work around Councillor Carpenter? Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm very happy to support the recommendations. Uh, this takes us to the next stage in Scotland. I was particularly encouraged at looking at paragraphs 14, 15, and 18, which really you know, makes the point that it's not right to have the same as that. And that's on top of, as you, as you said, with the 19 um, planning conditions already in place. Um, I, I think the other point really is that I also looked at the Arcadis situation. There's eight consultants who have fulfilled their C CVs in that respect. And, Noticed on page 81, the individual there is a specialist in the EMC and the EM field and everything else, which is one of the areas that we, we, we have some concern on. So I, I think really it's moving uh, in the right direction and very happy to support. Thank you. Thanks. That's for Ms. Bell. Thank you, Chairman. Um, IFA2 is probably one of the biggest, or I thought the biggest project that this council's ever had to look at, and having had a very long planning committee. Uh, hundreds of members of the public coming to listen to that. I'm quite amazed that we don't have any members of the public coming here to actually listen to you allaying some of the fears that they were raising at the planning committee, which this document actually goes towards helping to solve. And I find that quite amazing. So down to the press to, uh, to explain what we're doing here this evening. My thanks must be given to the officers. They have put a huge amount of time into this project. And I just echo Councillor Cartwright's comments. If you look at the CVs of the consultants that they're using to carry out these studies, they have got amazing group, uh, a group of uh, individuals that will help us go towards this project further down the road. So yes, support the recommendations as laid out on page 30. And um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Um, the, the financial aspects are very welcome and quite interesting if you, if you read through them. I, I think in relation to all the different points that were raised um, last year and into the previous year, this progress report gives us a very clear statement of the intended detailed technical evaluations and the objectives of each of those evaluations. I thought there's an excellent summary for the, each of the uh, four core areas on pages 42 to 44. Very understandable, some of you may say, for a very technical subject. Uh, and also, um, this, the experiences and programs of the team that will be involved are really quite exceptional with very high degrees of specialisation, which I guess is what is needed here in terms of uh, some rarity in terms of circumstances. And also, I thought the intended market accessibility assessment outlined in pages 91 to 103 is very comprehensive and should clearly answer the questions that have arisen in the past in terms of any potential adverse implications. Um, I guess in final analysis, in terms of, of our vision for data, that's a very important part of the total set of studies. So, um, and also, in section five, a very intensive um, time scale. Um, it's about three months of which we're trying to complete most of these activities, so very intensive. Um, so I'm very happy to note for and to endorse the scope for work set out in appendices A and B. Okay. Thank you very much. All those recommendations agree. Okay. Uh, so the next item is to exclude the public and press uh, 